yeah, today's video is gonna be very informal and it's really just me sitting here in the studio um, before students come. And I wanted to talk about this um, because I'm asked all the time. And I do seem like a very prolific artist, I guess in, in terms, I kind of am. I mean, I usually get a piece done um, one every, once a week in some cases. Um, and sometimes some pieces take longer. And honestly, folks, there are some pieces that never make it to YouTube or to Patreon. They're just pieces, whether they're commission pieces or maybe they're too large. And I just don't, I just don't want to be bothered with having to videotape it. So, um, yeah, but I do get a lot of work done but folks ask me all the time where do you find your inspiration what what makes you create or have you ever had a slump where you just couldn't do it so that's what we're gonna talk about today now the few times that I have um, run into that I just not feeling it just can't do it usually something has happened something tragic um, the first case where I remember actually being totally slumped out and not being able to create. Um, and I guess it was uh, 2012, 2013, I guess it was 2013. It was July and we had downtown had a major flood. And you know, this is my art studio and my art studio is right down on Market Street in downtown Kingsport. And when that happened, I had over a foot of water standing in my studio, as did a lot of the merchants in downtown Kingsport. I lost all my electronics, I lost rugs, I lost um, a lot of reference books, a lot of really good reference books. Um, but you know, I didn't lose any paintings. I didn't lose any paintings, and I was actually very fortunate compared to a lot of the merchants downtown. Some never recovered, but during that time, I just went into this almost like shock. I, I had, I was working on a painting of pink flamingos, or not pink flamingos, pink, pink pelicans, and uh, I never returned to that piece. That piece was forever marked by the flood, like in my mind or in my heart or however you want to describe it. I couldn't paint. I couldn't. I couldn't. And it took a while. Like I, I had commission work that I had to do. So, but. Ugh. That was a tough time for me. And even when I talk about it now, I can still feel my throat getting tense. That was a slump, but um, I had to pull myself out of it because I had to pay bills and I was able to kind of negotiate, but that was not, it was because it was my sanctuary that got affected. I mean, my, my art studio is, I'm sure a lot of you folks that are artists also feel like your art studio is your sanctuary. It's where you, you know, you create, it's what, it's what you do. And it, mine was affected. And, um, so that's one example. Another example was when my father died and my father died, um, in October and not this past October, it was three years ago. But anyway, he, when he passed, um, I was working on a commission and it was a commission for the holidays. And I had a really hard time returning to that piece. Just like the pink pelicans from the flood, this piece was forever marked for me. And, but it was a commission. I had to complete it. Oh, and it was like pulling teeth. Uh, I just, uh, I, my heart wasn't in it. It was just really difficult for me to do. And it was a sweet piece. It was a woman holding her dog's face, you know, just kissing her dog's nose. And you think that would have been a great, like maybe uplifting piece, but because it occurred, I was painting it during the time of my father's death, that really marked it for me. And I had a really hard time, just as I had a hard time when, after my dog Phoebe passed. And you guys know Phoebe from a uh, previous video, some of my earlier videos. Now you know Singer, and Singer was the reason I was able to just get back into the, you know, back in the saddle, so to speak. But those are, you know, you see it's obviously some it, marked by some kind of tragic or sad event, which can put me off my creative, uh, kind of ceases, the creative juices stop, stop flowing. <laughs> so those are incidents, you know, inc you know s incidences where that has affected me. Um, but what do you do? What do you do if just you wake up one morning, and you're like, I'm not feeling it. Well, these are the things that I do. And hopefully these are um, things that can help you if you are in an, art, in an artistic slump and just not feeling inspired. 
One thing I like to do, and of course here we are in the land of technology, we have the ability to just look at everything. And one of the things that helps me is I return to artists that I've studied and have loved. Um, for me, oftentimes it's Robert Bateman, who is a wildlife artist, if you're not familiar with his work. Um, I love his work, always have, because they do tell a story. Um, I'll, I'll look at artists, John Singer Sargent. I have reference books, but if you don't have them in reference books, go online. Just look, look at the works of artists that you love. Ask yourself, why do you love this piece? What did this artist do to this particular painting that has, you know, that, that strikes you? And start to look at the reasons why a piece strikes you and then see if that doesn't spark something in you to want you to create. So looking at other artists' works that I love and appreciate is really helpful for me. Another thing that I like to do is go to museums. Now, museums are a wonderful place to get inspiration because you're looking at the actual artworks. Um, you're in a, in a room with other people that are appreciating the same artworks that you're appreciating. And there's that energy, you know, there's that energy. And if you can catch that energy, grab it, you know, and that's why when I go away, when I just go away uh, to whatever state or country I happen to be in, I'm always looking for the museum. And I love going into art museums and I can't feel help but feel as if though I'm a sponge and I'm soaking up all this beautiful art and almost can catch the inspiration off the pieces that I'm looking at. So that's another good way to go ahead and, and rekindle, um, you know, your creative spark, you know, just getting it, getting it going. So that's another thing. Uh, another thing is switch mediums. Try something new. You know, if you're an oil painter, grab you some clay whatever just create just get your hands into it if it's if you're a watercolor artist go with charcoal or pastel whatever mix it up a little bit sometimes you just need to just step out of your your general comfort zone and try something new um and i'm i like doing that i guess part of my science brain uh yes i was a scientist in a previous life um that science part of me likes to experiment. And it's also, you know, if you think about experimentation, that's part of creativity, right? So try a different medium, do something different. Just do something, just do something. Don't sit in that slump and go, oh, you know, I can't, I'm just not feeling it. Yeah, I mean, it happens, it happens to all of us. Um, but for me, another major, major source of inspiration is just stepping outside. Take a walk in the woods. Um, as a matter of fact, today when I was driving in, it's, um, it happens to be November 5th when I'm videotaping this. So I'm looking at all the beautiful color of the trees right now and the leaves are falling and the sun was shining. You know, you have that beautiful fall sky that's blue, intensely blue. And of course, color does inspire me anyway. I'm, I'm definitely sparked by color. So just walking outside um, and looking at everything, just looking at all the colors. Um, art can be also sensual. So for me, um, if I'm in nature, I'm smelling the soil. I am uh, feeling the cool breezes. I am hearing the birds sing, I often take my shoes off, even if it's 38 degrees out, I've been known to do this. And I take my shoes off and just stand in the grass. I ground myself anyway. So, um, but being connected to earth and being connected to my environment and being connected as a nature artist, primarily a nature artist, does help me to gather energy and inspiration to do the next piece. So if you're slumping, look for things that just spark you. Um, so much, so many opportunities out there to, to create that spark. If you're a figure artist or a portrait artist, definitely go to a portrait gallery and go look at the arts, uh, art in the museums. That is like a huge one. But you know what? Maybe your city or town has a figure drawing uh, class or opportunity at your art, you know, your whether it's your, um, you have one in your city that's like an art guild or some type of art organization where you can get into a figure drawing class. 
Um, even if that's a little, you know, sometimes that can be uncomfortable for those of us who, I, I didn't go to art school. I, I didn't, um, my degree's in animal science. So um, the first time I took a live uh, figure drawing um, class or just an opportunity to draw, a draw from a live model, you know, you, you got a naked person standing in front of you. And, and at first you're like, oh, 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 goodness. But within seconds or minutes when you start sketching, you forget that. And, um, and really it's amazing how much that has helped me as an artist, not just, you know, I do some figurative work and I do um, portrait work, but even for my animal work, getting into the zone of just doing quick sketches, quick sketches, just move that, just move that pencil around, move that, in my case, it's usually fine charcoal, um, just move it around and see what happens. That's a great way to spark and get the, the, you know, prime that pump, so to speak, to get those juices flowing. Um, what other ways have I, have I sparked? Whether well, see, we talked about museums, we talked about going into nature, we talked about looking at the artists that you appreciate. You can go on Instagram. <laughs> you go to, to get Instagram, you can go to their uh, websites, you can just look, just get in there and look. Um, yeah, that's, that's how it works for me. I'd be curious to know what gets your creative juices flowing? What sparks you into creating your work? And what do you do when you're in a slump? I'd like to know, leave it in the comment section. It would be really interesting. And I think that a lot of um, my viewers and subscribers on YouTube would probably really benefit from hearing what you do as well. So let's get a dialogue going. Uh, just leave it in the comment section. I wanna hear because of uh, you know, I, because what works for me, because I'm primarily a nature artist, I do wildlife. That's, um, yeah, being in nature definitely does inspire me. For me also, going to a zoo, going outside with my camera, looking at squirrels. I mean, it could be something that you don't have to, <laughs> for me as a wildlife artist, I would love to go to Africa and go on safari and take lots of pictures. I haven't done that yet. So go on safari in your neighborhood. Folks, there is, you know, a squirrel. There's a person walking their dog with the sunshine and the light hits right, whatever. Get out and look for inspiration. If it's not chasing you down, go find it. Um, yeah, I wanna know what you do. So leave it in the comment section. And I hope that you found today's little video helpful. Um, I hope that um, if you're in a slump and you can pull yourself out, hear what I did and I'd like to hear, I want to hear what puts you in your slump if you're in one um, and what created your slump. You, you heard from me that for me, it's usually marked by some kind of tragic event. It doesn't always have to be that way for everybody. Um, some people just wake up and are like, meh, nothing, nothing bad's happened, nothing, you know, but they feel like their inspiration dried up and they're just like, now what do I do? <laughs> what do I do now? And uh, yeah, so there are opportunities um, and ways to get that thing going again. So I, again, I hope today's video helped you a little bit. And uh, if it did, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and uh, let me know what you do for your slumps. And again, if you are my subscribers, as always, thank you so much. And if you're not, you know what to do, go ahead and subscribe. And uh, I wanna thank you for being here. So from Kingsport, Tennessee, and in my studio, in my sanctuary, I'm getting ready to go paint. <laughs> so I'll see ya, bye.